think of inventions, how many of you have something like this spring to mind? Well, today we are talking about the pinnacle of where creativity meets invention. We are looking at a Rube Goldberg machine. How is? I hear you ask. Well, in order to understand a Rube Goldberg machine, let's look at what it is and who it's named after. Rube Goldberg was born in San Francisco, California and was an engineering graduate from the University of California, Berkeley way back in 1904. Despite this, he was most famous not as an engineer, but as a cartoonist. He gained fame for devising and drawing deliberately complicated machines to complete simple tasks. The machines he drew became so famous in fact that it eventually inspired a yearly Rube Goldberg machine competition that's been going since 1988 with the sole purpose of being as creative as possible in inventing a machine. So let's talk about what a Rube Goldberg machine actually is. Typically, a Rube Goldberg machine is set off by something which then causes an irreversible chain reaction, like a domino effect, until the chain reaction has completed a long series of complicated mechanisms and something simple has been achieved. That could be anything from turning on a light switch, pushing down the lever on a toaster, or flushing a toilet. So, let's look at chain reactions. In the case of a Rube Goldberg machine, the chain reaction usually works by two things. Potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy looks at the energy which is stored because of its position or state, whereas kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Even though the idea of potential energy goes back to ancient Greece, the term potential energy was first coined and explained by Scottish physicist William Rankin in the 19th century. A good example of potential energy is a ball on top of a ramp. We give the ball potential energy by lifting it up and putting it on top of the ramp. When it's sitting there, it doesn't lose any of that energy and it's just sitting there with that potential energy waiting for something to happen. Obviously, it needs some sort of other force to get it to move. For this, we have to mention part of Sir Isaac Newton's first law of motion, which states, <clears throat> an object will not move unless acted upon by a force. So, when we give the ball a nudge, it comes tumbling down the ramp. It's losing that potential energy when it wasn't doing anything and gaining kinetic energy as it moves. The same amount of work that we use to lift the ball would have to be done by the force of gravity to bring the ball back down the ramp to the ground. Another example is a stack of dominoes in a line. When these dominoes are in position, they all have potential energy. We might think of this as the potential to start a chain reaction. When we knock over one domino, that potential energy has quickly changed into kinetic energy. That kinetic energy is transferred and that's what's causing this chain reaction. This chain reaction, or domino effect as it's sometimes known, is the basis of exactly how a Rube Goldberg machine works. Let's build our own Rube Goldberg machine and see how we get on. First things first, it's time to make a plan and the best place to start is the end. What simple tasks do I want my Rube Goldberg machine to achieve? For me, I'm going to focus on mine hitting the switch to boil my kettle. I'm going to gather a lot of different objects from around the house and see what I can make with them. When making a Rube Goldberg machine of your own, it's important to start off with a simple idea for your machine and you can always make it more advanced or complicated if you like. For objects that you can use, a good place to start is gathering things such as clothes pegs, simple building blocks which can be used as dominoes, platforms or channels for balls to roll down, string and sticky tape which you can use to make pulley systems with or hang objects from, containers from your recycling, Silly objects can be more useful than they might look and are always welcome in Rube Goldberg machines too. Heavier objects like pots can be used as weights or containers, but always ask whoever owns the pot that it's okay to borrow it first. If in doubt, always gather different and more building materials. Time to get building! It's always a good idea to draw a plan of your machine before you begin, but sometimes just getting hands-on and seeing what works and what doesn't as you go can be equally useful. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit through about what my plan is for my Rube Goldberg machine. So I have my ball here. This is going to set it off, hopefully. And we're going to have it tumbling down the ramp, going around all of these dominoes. Got the double dominoes up here, adding that little bit of extra weight and extra force, coming all the way around. And hopefully it should nudge this in position off the table and should pull the trigger down to boil the kettle. That's how it should work in theory. Let's see how it goes. Three, two, one. Admittedly, I had a few false starts, but I managed to get my Rube Goldberg machine to work exactly as I had planned. I've learned that success with building a Rube Goldberg machine is all about trial and error. So if something doesn't quite go to plan, that's okay. It's all about making adjustments and most importantly, not giving up. Why not give it a bash at making your own? Send us photos or videos of any and all attempts, no matter how simple or complicated, and let us know how you got on. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.